This is CBS 12 News at 5. Now at five, canine arrest controversy. New fallout over this video showing a PBSO canine biting an already handcuffed suspect. I just thought it was over excessive. How local officials are reacting and the action already being taken by the sheriff's office. Plus a family's desperate search for their father. A Palm Beach Gardens man vanishes while driving for Lyft. His cell phone seems to have gone dark. Where his cell phone last pinged and why it's raising even more questions. And solar panel scam. It's a nightmare. Homeowners ripped off paying tens of thousands of dollars for solar panels that don't work. Is your business scamming people or is it simply incompetent? The CBS 12 News I team exposing the lies from panels to permits. There are lives at stake. Let me say that. Could be yours. How the company is responding and what you need to look for so you don't become the next victim. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us. I'm Liz Kedantis. I'm Jim Grimes. Let's get a first check of our forecast. Our chief meteorologist, Vetus Reed, joining us right now. Vetus, a gorgeous afternoon out there. Yeah, it looks really great. We're seeing beautiful conditions, uh, nice bright blue skies, and it looks like warm temperatures above normal, and that's where we've been for the last several days, getting those temperatures in the 80s. As you can take a look here, absolutely clear conditions out at Juno Pier, and we'll continue to see those warm temperatures pretty much as we go through the next several days. Uh, well, next day here until we get a front pushing through and that's going to drop things down. Looking at 81 degrees in Fort Pierce, 82 Port St. Lucie, 83 Royal Palm, 80 in Jupiter right now. West Palm about 80 degrees, Boynton 80 degrees, and it looks like we're seeing mainly clear skies and that will be the case going through the overnight. Still a southerly flow. You can kind of see how the clouds are moving there uh, inland, but it looks like we're waiting for this next system. This is going to be our next weather maker. That's going to be dropping our temperatures down as we get towards Friday. Friday night. Before that, all this messy weather stays to the north of us, but once that gets here, it's going to be punching through that warm air as we get to Friday late evening, and that's going to give us a chance for showers and thunderstorms and change our temperatures. So enjoy these temperatures in the 80s across the state. As you see, the cooler air just north and west of Pensacola still sitting at 76 degrees. Looking a little bit ahead here, you can see how that hour by hour forecast shows the cooler air knocking on the door as we get towards Friday. Things cool down for the weekend. I'll time it all out for you. Have a closer look at our weekend forecast coming up. We begin tonight with this video sent to us by a viewer which has sparked an internal investigation at the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office. Yeah, it's a story we've been covering for the past few days. The arrest of a man in Belle Glade involving a Palm Beach County Sheriff's deputy and his canine dog. It has the community concerned about potentially excessive force among officers and whether or not the department is being transparent. Yeah, we have team coverage tonight on just how authorities are working to do just that. Our Amber Robb is standing by to explain and a new tool deputies will soon have. But first, our Al Pefley has reaction from county leaders on the arrest. Al? Jim, according to the Belglade mayor, the Palm Beach County State Attorney's Office is now looking into, into this incident, and PBSO has placed two deputies who were involved in the incident on administrative leave. I just have to wait and see what happens. But for what I looked at, I'm not happy about it. We showed Belglade Mayor Steve Wilson video of the incident that occurred last week when PBSO used a canine to help take a rape suspect into custody. I thought it was over aggressive and I, I'm sure the sheriff's going to do what he needs to to investigate it thoroughly or have it investigated. We don't ever want our officers to be over aggressive to our, our citizens of this community. That's a no, no. 30-year-old Gerson Delmas was wanted on an outstanding warrant for sexual assault when PBSO deputies spotted him in Belglade January 26th. According to the arrest report, when deputies attempted to take him into custody, Delmas did not surrender willingly. Cell phone video shot by a bystander shows a deputy punching Delmas twice in the head. Even after he was handcuffed and shackled in the front seat of a police vehicle, Delmas continued to kick and headbutt deputies trying to take him in. That's when the canine officer got involved. Delmas, according to the report, even kicked the dog in the head. This is when the cell phone video shot by a bystander is raising questions. Delmas, who is handcuffed and shackled, is pulled from the SUV and winds up face down on the ground. The arrest report indicates that Delmas continued to kick and flail his body when he was on the ground, but the video shows the opposite. He's no longer resisting, but the PBSO canine dog can be seen aggressively biting and tearing at his ankle and leg. It's disturbing to us. Um, you, you can only imagine uh, what a a parent or loved one have to go through to see that their loved one has been handled that way. I just thought it was over excessive. 
Mayor Wilson says he worked as a correctional officer and an administrator in the state prison system for 28 years, and he knows one should never use excessive force. If he had the handcuffs on, I didn't think it was necessary to have the dog there at the time, unless there was some other things going on that I'm not aware of. Um, and that's in my eyes that it was excessive. Mayor Wilson says he's confident Sheriff Bradshaw will investigate the incident thoroughly. We hope that uh, whether the state, uh, Sheriff Bradshaw, that they, once they get to the bottom of it, they do the right thing to make sure that it should never happen again. And we asked the sheriff's office if they're concerned about discrepancies between what the arrest report says happened and what the cell phone video shows actually happened. We also asked the sheriff's office if the actions of the canine handler are in line with current PBSO policy. Meanwhile, the state attorney's office confirmed that they are assisting PBSO in the investigation, but because it's an ongoing investigation, state attorney's office is not commenting further. Live near West Palm Beach, Al Pefley, CBS 12 News. We continue our team coverage now with our Amber Robb. Yeah, Amber, police body cameras would have been useful in this case. We've been hearing that might happen soon. Yeah, within the next 30 days, deputies here at the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office will be walking around with body cameras on. It's something many say has been a long time coming, but these specific body cameras have capabilities that no other department in our area has. The ability to live stream. An upgrade years in the making. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office announcing it will finally be getting body cameras after a long battle. And these ones will have live streaming capability. Body cameras are something Vice Mayor Maria Sachs says the Palm Beach County Commission and community members have been pushing for for years. We have to be transparent to the people and we have the technology to do it. There's no reason not to. A couple of years ago, we couldn't. Palm Beach County is one of the largest sheriff's departments in the state, and according to a report from the Florida Department of Law Enforcement, is one of the only sheriff's departments in our area without body cameras. Palm Beach County Police Benevolent Association President John Kazanjian says this will help commanders make plans while officers are in the field. But in a critical incident, whether you know you need to back off, back out, whether you need more support, things like that, whether you need uh, medics, emergency, so it's, it's really going to help. It's a, it's a no-brainer. The cameras will cost the department $20 million. The funding coming out of the $835.1 million budget approved in September of last year. Sachs says the commission gives the department a budget and the sheriff decides where that money goes. This is something that, that the sheriff studied and found that this was the best technology to have. He waited a little longer, but I think live streaming is the way to go. Both Sachs and Kazanjian say this is a move that will make our community safer. I'm always going to worry about that, whether you have a camera or not. So uh, I think the cameras, uh, having the deputy, the individuals, knowing that they have the camera on, you know, they're going to think a, a little bit more on, you know, what they can do and what they can't do. Before the cameras are put to use, deputies will undergo training on how to use them. Reporting live in West Palm Beach, I'm Amber Robb. CBS 12 News. Happening right now in Washington, D.C., members of the Congressional Black Caucus are meeting with President Biden to talk about police oh, reform. They are asking the president to push for the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act, which aims to combat alleged misconduct, excessive force, and racial bias in policing. The meeting comes just a day after the funeral of Terry Nichols. That's the Memphis man who died after officers beat him during a traffic stop. We're learning more tonight about the search for a missing Lyft driver from Palm Beach Gardens. The 74 year old hasn't been heard from since Monday, but it looks like there's a new lead in the search. CBS 12's Lena Salzbank has been following the investigation from the start. So Lena, what are you learning new tonight? Well, the family tells me that Lyft has been in contact with them and with local law enforcement, and they say that Gary Levin last picked up a fare around 1 o'clock on Monday in Delray Beach, and he completed that fare around three hours later in Okeechobee. But then his phone went dark, and nobody has heard from him since. 
The family says that drop off location was at the corner of Northwest Park Street and Parrots Avenue. Verizon Wireless also confirming to the family that Okeechobee was the last location that Levin's phone was pinged. And since the 74 year old's phone has been off and inactive, it has now been 72 hours since family has seen or heard from Levin, something they tell CBS 12 News is unusual and concerning. Levin was driving a red 2020 Kia Stinger that looks like the car up on the center of your screen. Law enforcement tells the family they have been able to track the car using highway cameras and it was spotted most recently near Gainesville. We're very broken up. Uh, any logical explanation, including having his battery go dead or something, my dad, my dad would, would get a new, uh, a new cable. He always has a cable with him, but he would get a new cable. Levin's children says that they are waiting to hear from Kia so that they can further track their father's car. In the meantime, they say if anybody has any information about their father's whereabouts, whether that's local uh, hospitals in the area or anybody in the Okeechobee area, they're asked to please call police. In Palm Beach Gardens, Lena Salzbank, CBS 12 News. Next at five, our I-Team investigation into solar panel, a solar panel company accused of charging thousands for unfinished projects. How they're defending their actions tonight. Plus a new push to get more nurses into hospitals and overcome that nationwide shortage. But our area is now benefiting. We'll tell you how. Somebody decided to put the cord there. Okay, here is the gym shot. Oh my god. Okay. Are you kidding? I don't know any news managers who do what you guys are doing, and I definitely don't know any anchors who are sweeping floors.
The Sunshine State seems made for solar power with the tax credits, savings on your energy bill, and the idea of producing clean, green energy. There are a lot of good reasons to consider solar panels. Yeah, there really are, Liz. So many people are looking into this right now. They're hoping that they can save a little bit of money with this, but here's a couple of lessons. Make sure you do your research before you ever decide to hire a contract. As iTeam investigator Danelle DeRoss explains, there's one company doing business in our area, and as it turns out, they are now accused of starting solar projects and then walking away from the job altogether. Take a listen. The customers you're about to meet say despite having their panels mounted and absorbing the Florida sun for months, their rooftop solar has not produced a single watt of energy. And that is because their panels never worked, and now they suspect they're being scammed. And a lot of work, let me tell you. Professional housekeeper and avid gardener Estella Padilla is particular about her home in Boca Raton. This is right here. Everything is just how she wants it. Well, almost everything. Every time when I come in outside and I see them, I say, what a mistake. Hmm. Yes. And then I am like really, really, really angry. Yes. She hired a company called Vision Solar. They promise to save customers hundreds on their electric bill, and their website makes it clear they handle all the permits. Hey, Estella hey, says that is a lie. Vision Solar installed solar panels on her roof in June of 2021. Estella took out a $40,000 loan to cover the cost and is paying more than $100 a month to pay it back. She thought her savings on electricity would more than make up the difference, but her utility bill is as high as ever. Turns out her solar panels were never activated or connected to the power grid. And they're still not working. It's been a year and a half. Year and a half, exactly. To make matters worse, she recently got this notice on her door. Vision Solar never got a permit for the installation, so her solar panels, which don't work, are also illegal. It's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. Estella reached out to the I-Team for help because she says Vision Solar has been ignoring her request to cancel her contract. We discovered she's not the only one. Oh, we wanted solar panels because this is the sunshine state. Jason Boulard lives in Deerfield Beach. He bought $40,000 worth of panels from Vision Solar two months after Estella. Do they work? Nope. They're, they've never been activated. Ever. Jason says he was patient with Vision Solar after the install. They kept blaming the city for inspection delays. Eventually, he called the city himself. Yeah, the permit hasn't even been applied for. Wait, are you serious? And she said, what company is it? I said, it's Vision Solar. She said, oh, again. And it's not just here in South Florida. Customers across the country have had the same experience. Vision Solar's profile with the Better Business Bureau has hundreds of complaints, many alleging that the company routinely signs up customers for expensive projects, doesn't get the permits, installs panels that don't work, then leaves them hanging. There are lives at stake. Let me say that. It could be yours. Palm Beach County's top building official, Doug Wise, says improper solar installations have caused fires and that a company cutting corners puts your family and property at risk. Before letting any contractor do work on your home, Wise says make them show you the permit. And if they don't have one, report it and don't let them do anything. That would be illegal under the Florida Code and the Florida statute. Black and white. Black and white, no doubt. He says he can only guess why Vision Solar would be installing so many projects without permits. It's competitive advantage. I mean, they get an advantage because they can sell the job and have it installed and walk away. Problem is the owner ends up holding the bag, particularly if it's not permitted. Vision Solar is a national company with a South Florida location here in Deerfield Beach. A spokesperson at their headquarters in New Jersey agreed to speak to us over the phone. We own it. Uh, we have not made the, the correct promises to various customers that we were going to get these things done in an expedited fashion, and we have not delivered on that. Bennett Andelman, Chief Marketing Officer at Vision Solar, admits that the company has been installing panels without permits. He claims that's because their business grew too quickly, and certain steps in the process slipped through the cracks. Is your business scamming people, or is it simply incompetent? Uh, uh, well, I appreciate that. Um, one, I'll answer the first part first. Um, absolutely not. Uh, we are not scamming anyone. This is a 
legitimate business that has grown really, really quickly and is just trying to find its way. Now, that doesn't help anyone that is in the middle of a crisis when it comes to these particular panels. He tells the I-team that customers like Estella and Jason can get out of their contracts and have the panels removed. At this point, I'd like to get my roof repaired, get these panels off, and have absolutely nothing more to do with Vision Solar. After the I team started asking questions, Vision Solar set up a new email address for customers to contact them. And here it is, customer experience at visionsolar.com. They are promising to correct their mistakes, either secure the permits and get the panels working or let customers out of their contracts. And coming up, we have an update on one of the customers that we interviewed. We'll show you how her situation changed once we started pressing Vision Solar for answers. For the I team, I'm Danielle DeRoss. And so, no matter how you measure, it's six more weeks of winter weather. And there you have it. Puxatawney Phil has spoken. Everyone's favorite groundhog saw his shadow this Groundhog's Day, meaning we're in for six more weeks of winter. All right, our chief meteorologist, Vita Reed, joining us right now. I'm okay yeah. with that. A little longer winter for Florida, that's a that's good thing, That's not a bad right? thing. Yeah, it's not a bad thing, and I kind of agree with that now that I'm a Floridian, but when <laughs> I used to live in Michigan, Indianapolis, over in Baltimore, yeah, it'd be very frustrating, but uh, definitely the little guy uh, came through as far as for folks who like to see it cold or clouds like my folks, they like snowflakes. They're going to love that forecast, but taking a look at Phil's predictions, you can see he uh, had 106 more winter seeing his shadow over the last uh, several years. You're looking at early spring, no shadow about 20 times, so that's showing you how many times there's been more chances for more winter. As far as that percentage of being right, looking in the past 10 years, Phil was right about 40% of the time so uh, it looks like not too bad of a percentage but let's get our forecast right and we'll talk about what's going on now why he saw a shadow you see all this cluster of rain and the sleet over uh, parts of Texas the south from Atlanta to Jackson Mississippi Birmingham Alabama getting rain nice clear skies up here around Pennsylvania where they got to see uh, Puxa County come on out and give that uh, forecast so Clear skies, saw his shadow, there's your longer winter. But for us, looks like we are seeing the rain staying north of us. We have dry conditions down here in South Florida. Looks like what we're seeing is still the effects of high pressure. Given this a southerly flow, there's those uh, double barrel lows to the north of us. But here's that front I was telling you about yesterday, starting to make its way off the coast of Texas. That's going to move closer our direction towards Friday evening. And you see that? C-O-L-D, that is cold air right behind it, and it's going to be joining us as we get towards Friday night into Saturday, dropping our temperatures down. So warm air out there, if you like it in the 80s, well, it's going to be about another day to get that. You see those temperatures in Daytona, Tampa, looking at Fort uh, Myers, upper 70s, lower 80s, Vero Beach about 80 degrees. Our temperature for tomorrow it's going to be pretty nice. We're going to see mostly sunny skies. And then we're going to see temperatures uh, in the afternoon right around 83. Stewart, 83 in Indian Town, 86 West Palm before the cool front starts moving in, dropping those temperatures down. So we're going to see those temperatures fall from 86 to about 72 for a high on Saturday. And the clouds move in. It's going to be kind of a rainy weekend. I took an extra day off this weekend for my birthday, and it's going to be cloudy and rainy all weekend. Can you believe that? Anyway, here's what happened in Mother Nature. Thanks a lot. It looks like what we're going to see the system moving in, timing it out. Looks like we're seeing this front push through. This is Friday. Uh, probably starting to see some clouds around 6, 7 o'clock. Showers move through, and then it looks like we'll see Saturday a little bit of this uh, front retracting and becoming stationary and sticking around through the weekend. So here's what it looks like as far as what we're going to see. We're going to see on your 10-day forecast 85 to 87 degrees on Friday. The front moves through. Looks like we'll see showers moving in for Friday, Saturday, even maybe a few rumbles of thunder, a little bit of a wet weekend, and then temperatures remaining in those 70s into early next week. More after the break. I forget. I'm like, I can. Mic check. One, two, three. Oh, wait. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five. I forget at 530. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uno, dos, tres. I can, you got me?
Alyssa, they said we're a little loud. How you doing? They, Alyssa, they said we're a tidbit loud. I'm not yelling. This is what I'm doing. This is how I talk. <laughs> you want me to yell? I can yell. <laughs> no, this is normal. <laughs> this is normally how I talk. This is better. That good? Better, 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 better. Any better? Five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. Cool. <laughs> I didn't think I was yelling. Tonight, Breeze Airways is making its first flight out of Vero Beach Regional Airport. The new low fare airline is offering services out to three cities, Westchester, New York, Norfolk, Virginia, and Hartford, Connecticut. Flights will be available Mondays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. Fares start at $79 for one-way trips. It's a good thing for the community and the people of the area. It gives them additional travel options. Uh, to the Northeast uh, for people who travel back and forth to the Northeast. And um, it's, it's going to give them the opportunity to fly at an airport that's a little less crowded. The first breeze flight leaves at 7 p.m. for Hartford. And this might surprise a lot of you. Despite the sluggish economy, the Palm Beach County Tourism Agency announced that 2022 was a record-breaking year for tourism. According to the agency, more than 9 million people visited our area last year. It's a 31% increase over the year before. Tourism, by the way, they brought almost $10 billion to our economy. That's up 30% from the year before. Palm Beaches plans to welcome 19 new hotels 2025, so that'll help to bring even more people to our area. Some of our local law enforcement agencies are recognizing those who were pioneers in their field during this Black History Month. The St. Lucie County Sheriff's Office is remembering Captain Pat Duval who was the first person of color to hold a rank within the sheriff's office. The police substation on Juanita Avenue in Fort Pierce is named in his honor. The city of West Palm Beach is also celebrating its first black female firefighter. Natasha Potter started working at the city clerk's office before becoming a dispatcher and then a firefighter in 1988. Potter actually just retired today and dozens of her colleagues and friends showed up to wish her well. Well, coming up next, fighting fentanyl here in Florida. How both the governor and local deputies are taking action to keep this dangerous drug off the streets.